Hey, my name's Ted, and today we're going to talk about a modification that I did on my 3126B uh, Caterpillar engine in my RV, which is add an oil cooler to the engine. So I'm going to show you what I did, but first I want to explain uh, a little bit about why I did this and show a bit of a schematic to explain how this all worked. So the stock 3126B does have an oil cooler from the factory. It is built into the side of the block. Um, it's actually my opinion a decent design but not the best in the world certainly not the most serviceable i have another video or two uh, about when it started leaking from that area basically the the stock oil cooler is sandwiched in between the block and the oil filter housing and um, if that ends up starting to leak like what happened to me putting it all together uh, you got multiple gaskets, multiple layers, it all has to go together. But when it's not leaking, it works pretty well. What I was finding was that it, I thought it was a little bit undersized in this application where you've got a 330 horse engine, which is pretty much at the top of the rating range for 3126 in a 40 foot RV and maybe I'm operating it harder than what Caterpillar thought. But I had put in an oil temperature gauge and I had, was seeing on long climbs a temperature of around 240 which is hotter than what I would like albeit although not too hot necessarily the other reason I wanted to do this though was because I did an electric fan conversion if you look at my channel I've got some other videos on that where I replaced the big mechanical fan that cooled the radiator with a series of electric fans and I was very happy with the results of this but I, I also wanted to try to reduce the cooling load on the radiator um, and, and to do that I did a couple of things uh, again I got other videos on this but one of the things that I wanted to do was remove the oil cooling or at least reduce the oil cooling from the circuit and I, I drew this diagram to explain why so after the radiator you've got the the coldest water going into the water pump and into the engine the first thing that it hits in that passage is the oil cooler. So if you have hot oil, you're going to be heating that oil first thing, or heating the coolant first thing, and so then when it starts to go through the rest of the engine, cylinder head, all of that, where you really need it the most, it's going to end up being warmer than what it, what it could be. So what I did was a friend of mine machined up an adapter for me, just a sandwich adapter that went in between the oil filter housing and the filter um, and then it's got two hoses going to oil coolers and I actually ended up putting in two oil coolers and the end result now is that I'm really happy with with how it works um, there is a uh, the, the, the setup does not overcool the oil uh, you don't want your oil to be too cool uh, I generally want to see it be about 180 degrees or higher, and that's what I end up seeing. Uh, it's normally somewhere in the range of 180 to 195. Uh, that's a warm enough temperature where, especially at higher elevations and with the oil hitting hotter areas of the engine, like the pistons, it'll boil off the water. You don't have to worry about getting condensation in the oil that stays there and doesn't boil out when the engine's at temperature. Um, but it's also reducing the, the load on the cooling system from this side significantly. Um, I tend to think that there are some other benefits of having the cooler oil uh, squirting on the pistons to keep them cooler. And then also you've got cooler oil going through the turbo. So this was a custom thing that I did. It is something that would be fairly difficult to reproduce unless you happen to have a friend with a CNC mill like I do. Um, but if you want to do it, uh, I think it was worthwhile. So. Uh, I'll crawl underneath the bus now and I'll show you what I did. Okay, I'm now under the bus and this is kind of tight under here, so it's a look going to be a little bit hard to see what exactly I've got going on. And it's a little bit dirty because I've been driving it and probably could use a wash. But what you see up here is just a sandwich plate uh, that goes between the oil filter housing and the filter itself. And the way that I did this was a friend of mine um, basically bought a piece of round aluminum that uh, was solid the whole way through. 
in basically the same uh, diameter as the oil filter. Uh, I gave him a spare oil filter to make the measurements and unrolled out on the inside to create a top section and a bottom section. And so the top section, uh, essentially the center of it is hollow and then the top section and then the bottom section create the supply and the return. So I did this with um, dash 16 hoses so that I had um, enough size that I wasn't worried about a flow restriction. And then I went to the hose shop and it took a whole bunch of fittings and things like that to make all this fit because this is relatively tight. In the top, I also have a thermostatic switch. Um, I could do like what I did with, with my engine control fans, uh, my engine cooling fans, and put in a, a thermostat that would then be, uh, or rather a coolant temperature sensor, a temperature sensor rather than a thermostatic switch, and have it be controlled more precisely by the computer uh, with a PWM output. But I figured that I'd start off with this, and I frankly, I think it works just fine. There's no reason for me to do anything different. Uh, I believe I went with 195 on and 185 off for the temperature, but they make them in all different uh, configurations. So from here, dash 16 hose goes down, goes underneath the engine. And so then over here, you can see this, the setup that I did, uh, which is two of these in parallel. Um, they're actually different coolers, um, mostly because there was one that I bought that I ended up not liking as much after I got it. And so then I bought a different one when I decided to do the second one. Basically, the one of them by, by itself did not uh, seem like it was doing as much cooling as what I was hoping for. And uh, also one cooler by itself was creating a bit of an oil pressure restriction. So you can see that when it gets the oil cooler, it tees off and goes to the other oil cooler. And so in doing that, I removed the oil pressure restriction and uh, got more cooling. It's got a standoff from the bottom. It's not what I would call necessarily an ideal setup, but because they're protected by the fans on the bottom, uh, any debris that's getting kicked up by the tires over here probably will not cause an issue. Um, I have not had any issues so far. Um, and it was really the only place I could find that was going to be a good spot to put them. If I'd put them over here next to the oil filter, I would also be putting them right next to the exhaust right here. And I really didn't want to do that because uh, I, I figured that would probably be defeating part of the whole purpose of what I was doing. So uh, this is what I did. And one other thing to note with the sandwich adapter here. Um, so it's threaded. There's a couple of ways to do this. Um, on a lot of automotive sandwich adapters that you'll find uh, for sale for if you're going to do something like this with just a Chevy V8 or whatever, uh, they have a screw, uh, essentially a screw that comes up through the middle. And so that way you can orient your, uh, your fitting outlets wherever you want, and then you just tighten it. Um, for this, I didn't really see a particularly good way to do that. It certainly would be an option. Um, well, okay, let me rephrase that. There would, it would have been an option. It would have added extra effort as well. So what we did was uh, my friend made this up, but then he didn't drill the holes or tap them for the Dash 16 fittings. I then put it on the engine and tightened it, uh, figured out where everything was going to be lined up, marked it, and then he drilled accordingly. Okay, so I just want to make a little video to show you what I marked on here. So I tightened this down a little bit, not uh, fully compressed, um, but essentially it, everything needs to be between this line and then I'll have a matching one on the other side. However, about this 90 degree area here looks like it might interfere with the wastegate actuator. So, and it gets pretty close to the turbo. So it's probably better to put the holes on, let's see, on this side here, um, because it looks like there's gonna be more clearance and probably, and then also less turbo heat that might fry stuff. So 
Let me know if you have any questions. I'll mark, I'll also write on it ideal area to make it obvious. So if you do that, um, you know, you're doing it on a, uh, on a per engine basis, but it's certainly doable and this is a one-off job anyway. So hope you found this interesting. Um, again, this is a pretty high effort one just because of the fabrication. Um, otherwise it's really not significant effort. But uh, for, for me, it was worthwhile and definitely helped my overall goals with the engine and my RV. So thanks for watching.